Hello, all you amazing creative people. Welcome back to the Daz 3D YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about making cinematics just like the one you're seeing playing right now. We're going to do that using Daz 3D and Unity Timeline. That said, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Just kidding, I take that back. One quick caveat before anybody tries to read into it. Why are we using Unity and Daz? Because it's fun and because we want to show you exactly what you can do and can create when you combine Daz with other tools. If you have something else that you prefer for doing uh, 3D or cinematics, go ahead and feel free to use that. But if this speaks to you and seems like something that you want to learn how to do, then stick around and we will cover everything you need to know about making cinematics with Daz assets in Unity Timeline. The first thing we're going to do is head over to the Daz 3D website and I'm going to show you all of the assets that I'm using in my own cinematic. Feel free to pick these up if you'd like to follow along. Um, some of them might still be on sale at the time that you see this. I'm using this Desert Ruin modular set by 3D Lab. I think this is really cool and I'm going to show you why it is to your advantage when working in game engines like Unity to have modular systems. For my character, I chose the lovely Ico 8. This is an awesome figure for Genesis 8. I think she is gorgeous and she just fits so many different parts and genres really well, in my opinion. But feel free to use any character that you already have in your library or that you prefer yourself. And finally, it wouldn't be a desert treasure hunting scene without a treasure hunter outfit. So I went ahead and picked this one. I thought it looked really cool and was going to fit the theme of my cinematic perfectly. Okay, so with all of the assets downloaded, go ahead and open up a new project in Daz Studio. And because this is a modular set, all I'm doing here is laying out all of the pieces, uh, just one copy of each of the modular pieces so that I can see them all and uh, easily export them and keep them organized uh, when I bring them into unity. If you are using the desert ruins while you follow along, I'm still going to bring this desert asset into my project. Um, I'm still trying to debate whether I'll use it or not as it is very large and there are better ways that we could make a desert like this inside of unity, um, but I might keep it for now because maybe we'll borrow the textures. Once you have everything laid out, we'll be able to start exporting them to Unity using the Daz to Unity bridge. If you've never used it before, it's pretty easy, and um, I'm going to kind of walk you through it very quickly. So the first thing you need to do to get the bridge set up is to sign into your Daz Central account so that we can install the bridge. From your account, you can come over to under bridges to the Daz to Unity, and then simply just click the green button over here to install it. Next, you're going to want to go and grab the latest version of Unity, and we are going to create a high definition RP or the HDRP template. Go ahead and create the project. Uh, you can name it whatever you would like. When you open up your HDRP project, you should see something like this. This is the HDRP demo, which is going to show off some of the features. Uh, HDRP is Unity's premium render pipeline. It can do amazing things with lighting and I think it is perfect for what we want to try to accomplish with our cinematic scene. Once you've opened a new scene in Unity, I'm just going to name it Desert Scene. We're going to go ahead and create a terrain game object. So we do that by right clicking and then creating terrain. We can just leave it named Terrain. You can see over on the right the terrain settings. We can click this gear to be able to uh, change the size and a lot of different settings surrounding our terrain. Since this is a small scene to save space, I'm just going to make it by 100 by 100 instead of the default 1000. You can click on the paintbrush here to access some of the terrain editing. We could choose the type. So right now I have it on raise or lower terrain. I can choose a brush. I can mess with the size and opacity or strength of the brush different shapes and I'm actually going to use this to paint the variation on the terrain creating 
a look that mimics uh, sand dunes in a desert scene. You can always undo whatever you do, so feel free to play around with some different values to find something that works for you and looks real and natural. Once I'm happy, I'm just going to start right clicking to literally paint with this brush onto the terrain and give it a, a physical shape. If you want something to look more natural, you can always switch your brush to the smooth height. And with the low opacity, it's pretty easy to just go over and smooth out any rough edges to really give your landscape a look like a natural form sand dunes. Okay, let's not stress too much over the terrain yet. I just wanted to have a platform that we can start exporting our objects onto. So let's go ahead and hop back into Daz 3D and we're going to go ahead and start selecting these modular items and exporting them using the bridge. We'll go to File, Send to, Daz to Unity. It'll open up a box like this and the only thing you really have to do is go find your project wherever you saved it on your computer. Go into it and into the Assets folder, select that folder. This is where all of your DAS items are going to be sent to. You can look through here. Usually uh, it is able to detect the kind of mesh that you are exporting, so you shouldn't have to change that. And all of these def default values should be just fine. Once you're ready, go ahead and click Accept. At this point, it's just letting you know that Daz has done everything on its end, so it's time to hop back into Unity and finish the process. Don't uncheck anything we want at all. Click Import. It might take a minute for Unity to compile everything, and the first time that you do it, it is going to take the longest, as there are a lot of other files being installed besides just the asset. Once it's done, go ahead and click here. Don't worry about it, you can just click go ahead. It's going to compile a little more. And then we will be off to the races. And again, I promise, uh, after you do this the first time, it will be so much faster. And you will find that you're able to get your items into Unity very, very quickly. Oh, one last thing. Uh, the first time that you do it, you are going to have to go through this process here. Go ahead and click OK. It automatically opened the HRP settings for you, which is super nice. So all you need to do is scroll down towards the bottom, and you'll see here where it says Default Diffusion Profile Assets. Go ahead and click the plus so that we can create another Diffusion Profile Asset. Click on the icon here and we are going to select the iRay Uber Skin Shader, and this is going to ensure that our Genesis characters look uh, as good as possible in HDRP. That's all we had to do here. We can go ahead and close it, and now we are ready to get going. So I'm just going to come over here and check on my asset and make sure that everything looks okay. There it is. I'm just going to move it up into the light so we can inspect it. And that is looking really good. You can see it's preserved all the detail. And even with default lighting, uh, it is looking really good in my opinion. I'm very pleased with the results. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is hop back, clicking on the terrain to the smooth height. Um, let's go to Razor Lower Terrain, actually, and I am just going to create a flat area off in the corner here. This won't 
be visible in our actual cinematic. Uh, but for now, this is just where I'm going to lay out all of the modular assets as I bring them into Unity. So basically, I'm just going to be mimicking what I had done before in DAS 3D. I just want to lay out all the modular pieces, get them exported and ready to go. So that way we can start working with them in Unity. Okay, off screen, I went ahead and repeated that process for all the modular assets. And now here they are. Uh, looking great in unity so um, it should look something like this i went ahead and i was using a naming convention um, so the names aren't exactly what came out of daz i made my own names to simplify it now i am going to teach you a quick easy way to help organize your project even though this is relatively small if you were building a game or a large uh, project i would highly recommend that you organize your scenes this way so as you can see, I created an empty game object called world, and I've just set it up in a way that it's kind of acts as like a header to help organize my hierarchy and make it easy to look at. So I'm going to put the terrain in the world. I'm also making one called architecture, and that is a part of the world header. Inside there, we can add all of these prefabs. That is, um, notice how the items come in as blue. A prefab is something in Unity that can be reused. It basically stores data in an object, a game object, and you could drag it into a scene and have any number of them. So as a child of the architecture, we can hide it, keep things, you know, just kind of organized. And as I showed you just then, I could just grab the architecture object and actually be able to move everything all at once. So that's pretty cool. Um, but we are going to want to come into the assets folder and we are going to create a new folder and you want to name this folder prefabs we're going to grab all of these items here and we are going to drag them add them to the prefab folder um, actually it looks like you might have to do it one at a time So we'll go ahead and just add them in and we are going to create an original prefab. While some of these steps might seem really boring right now, I promise it is so worth it to keep your stuff organized, especially if you're making a game or a really big project, your scenes can get out of hand really quickly. So you want to keep your hierarchy nice and organized. Okay, now I'm hopping back into Daz really quick because I've decided I am sick of looking at the bland terrain with the checkerbox pattern. Let's go ahead and make this terrain look like a desert. So what I'm going to do is export the desert item from Daz into Unity. And hopefully you don't make the same mistake as I did. Some of you may have noticed that in this footage I kind of confused desert with dessert. I do catch it eventually and fix my spelling errors, uh, but for now, that mistake is going to be immortalized in this video. Yeah. Um, anyways, once you have the desert brought into Unity, you're going to see it's really big. It's got a lot of polys, and using something like this in real time is not a good idea. It's going to slow you down and give you a really low frame per second. So the only thing we want to steal from this, I mean, yeah, as you can see, just this alone has millions of uh, triangles, which is not great for Unity. So what we want to do is just go ahead and get rid of that. But we're going to use the object that we exported and we're going to borrow its material so that we can add it onto our terrain. So if you go to the brush, you'll find here where it says paint texture. And so the first thing that we need to do is create a terrain layer. So we're going to click edit here and create layer. Now I am just going to do a quick search. This is showing me all of the potential images that I could use for this texture. So I'm going to try to find the desert texture that that object was using. And I'm going to go ahead and use that to create the texture. Right now it's using that image kind of as like an albedo. Um, in Unity, it's known as a diffuse map. But the nice thing is we can also use the normal. 
So that's going to give us a lot more detail and help the sand look really good. You can mess around with some of the settings like the scale and things like that. Um, do whatever feels good to you. If you want to add more to the normal scale or less, you can do that. Thanks so much for watching. I think this is a good stopping point for now. I hope you've enjoyed this so far and I hope you will join us in the next one when we will learn more about bringing our character in and finally getting to the good part where we start using animations and creating our cinematic. This has been a lot of fun. I can't wait to be back with you again in the next one. And of course, if you enjoyed this, please consider liking, subscribing, let us know what you think in the comments or if you have any questions. Thanks so much, stay creative, and I will see you in the next one.